Sister Jane and Ellen and other friends of Bishop McFadden who are here from his native Archdiocese of Philadelphia. You know how much the diocesan family of the Diocese of Harrisburg is one with you from the moment the news of your brother's death reached the ears and hearts of the people of this diocese. And I speak on behalf of those who work so closely with your beloved brother and all of the clergy, religious, and laity of our diocese in expressing our continued unity with you as we hold his memory so dear and as we offer the sacrifice of this Mass for the happy repose of his soul. There was a virtuous man and righteous named Joseph. With those few words, St. Luke, in the gospel we just heard proclaimed, introduces to us Joseph of Arimathea, the one who cared for, who tended the body of Christ. He tended the body as it was taken down from the cross. He assisted as the body was tenderly placed in the tomb. The body which was not there when the women went looking for it three days later. The body that was raised from the tomb in the glory of the resurrection. A virtuous and righteous man named Joseph. And my brothers and sisters, we gather together this noonday on May the 2nd to commemorate a virtuous and righteous man that we knew and loved, whose name was Joseph. And by God's mysterious plan for his life, he tended the body of Christ. He did so as a coach working with young people, teaching and modeling he did so as a priest, and at the center of his priesthood and life was the mystery of the body of Christ, both the Eucharist and the mystical body of Christ, which is the church. And finally, in God's plan for the life of this Joseph, he was anointed in the fullness of Christ's priesthood so that he could tend the mystical body of Christ as a shepherd a shepherd first in the Archdiocese of Philadelphia, and then, by God's design, the shepherd here in this local church of the Diocese of Harrisburg. And so today we gather to give thanks to God for this virtuous and righteous man named Joseph. We turn to God's word as we must when we face the mystery of the limitations of our lives, when we face the mystery of the end of our lives, which is inevitable for every one of us. The book of Revelation gives us an interesting beatitude. Blessed are those who die in the Lord, for their labors go with them. The image is almost that of a trial, isn't it? We go before the Lord in that judgment, and John, in this great book of Revelation, tells us that the good deeds that we have done come with us as a kind of a witness, sort of a testimony before the final judgment to speak on our behalf. Blessed are those who die in the Lord. We all know the story of the final minutes of Bishop McFadden's life as he was in the car of his good friend and mine as well, Monsignor Joseph Garvin, on the way to the hospital, he asked for absolution. He must have known. And Monsignor Garvin imparted that absolution, which is such an essential part of the ministry of every priest. Blessed are those who die in the Lord. There's an old saying, sudden death, sudden mercy. That in the mystery of God's plan for us, if we die so unexpectedly and instantly, that God gives the suddenness equal to that surprise, the suddenness of his mercy. And it was certainly true 
in the last minute of Joseph McFadden's life. His sins were absolved and he experienced what St. Paul spoke of in our second reading, the first, his first letter to the Corinthians, that death is swallowed up, sin is swallowed up in the victory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And in that last moment, he experienced that victory over any sin he might have committed, over any inadequacies that he might have been responsible for in his life, and those sins were remitted by the power of the victory of Christ's resurrection. At baptism, Bishop McFadden's parents chose that name Joseph for their son, patron of a good death. St. Joseph certainly, I think, aided in that last moment, and he died suddenly, but a good death, assured that he was in the fullness of his baptismal graces by that second baptism, which we know as the sacrament of reconciliation. And finally, there is that reading from the Gospel of St. Luke, where we're introduced to Joseph, but more importantly, we see the model of how it is to die well. Jesus, with forgiveness on his lips for those who placed him on the cross, at the same time is absolutely confident in the love and the power and presence of his Father. And so he simply says, into your hands, I commend my spirit. That total surrender, that peaceful surrender is a model for all of us when the hour comes, when we too must face God's call to come home and to leave this world. I presume that the last prayer that Bishop McFadden prayed, if unless he began the prayers for May the 2nd, was the end of the Liturgy of the Hours the night before. And those of us who pray that night prayer, or Compline as it's called, know that there are two parts to the ending of every Compline part of the Liturgy of the Hours. There's a little aspiration that we pray, and that is, may the all-powerful Lord grant me a restful night and a peaceful death. I imagine that those were the final words of the church's official liturgy of the hours that our beloved Bishop McFadden prayed, and God granted that prayer, a peaceful death. And then after that little aspiration that concludes the day's liturgy of the hours, there is always a Marian hymn, a hymn to our Blessed Mother that concludes the day. I've always thought of that as a little child at the end of the day, wanting to be kissed and tucked in by one's mother to get a good night's rest. And so the church, in its wisdom, has us turn in that final prayer of the day to marry our mother, to salute her, and to ask her motherly protection over our lives. And so it was that Bishop McFadden concluded that day's prayer on May the 1st, the feast of his baptismal patron, St. Joseph, by praying a hymn to our Blessed Mother. In choosing his Episcopal model, he also wanted to focus on Mary, our mother. He chose as his Episcopal motto, Mary, the model, Christ, the center. And so he turned our thoughts to our Blessed Mother, the mother of the Savior, the mother of the Church, mother of priests, the mother of us all. He died on the second day of the month that is dedicated to our Blessed Mother, the month of May. And he died giving us the clear direction for our lives to turn to Mary, who is our model, model of faith, model of trust in God's will, model of discipleship, we can best honor our beloved Bishop McFadden by following that example in our own lives. 
how often he prayed, how often you and I pray that Mary might be with us and pray for us now and at the hour of our death. And so I know she did. I know that motherly intercession was not lacking for him in that last moment as she carried her priest and bishop's son home to her own son, our Lord Jesus Christ. As we celebrate and hold dear his memory today, and as we pray for him in this Mass, let us follow the example he has set for us. Let us turn to Mary, our model. Let us always be centered on Jesus, her Son. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen.